Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Glenn Carlson, and look, in this video, I'm talking about how I ended up building an innovation team that's made us a bunch of money, and it all came out of people saying no to me. It all came out of rejection, my fear of rejection, eventually my team's fear of rejection. And maybe you have a bit of that yourself, maybe your team has a bit of that themselves. What I know is there's a ton of bad advice online. One of the quotes, rejection is simply a course correction in your destiny. What a load of sh So I'm gonna talk about a way to think about rejection that totally reframed it for me and my team. I think it'll work for you. Now it started in sales for me and I'll play a quick video in a sec, but this applies to whether I'm reaching out to do a partnership, whether I want someone to come and join my podcast, whether I wanna pitch a new team member to quit their job, come work for us at a discount because we're on a mission. I mean, it's kind of scary putting yourself out there because there is that form of Rejection. No, no, no. Now, the sinister part of it is also around this need for recognition. And that wasn't where I was coming from. I didn't have high recognition needs, but I didn't like people saying no. I didn't like people saying that the value I had to offer wasn't good enough for them. So I now apply these three ways to think about no to everything. Let me play this whole video and then I'll come back. Rejection is just an opportunity for research and development. I started out in sales, I was on the phones and you know the idea of looking at a hung up phone waiting to pick it up and not knowing if that person was going to be interested in what I had to say or whether they were not going to be interested or they'd say no or whatever and like it's this roller coaster of emotion and I know if someone says no there's only three reasons they're saying no it's because you're communicating badly right and that's good feedback to understand or it's just not a good product fit, like what you have to offer, you're selling pizza and they don't eat carbs or something. And the third is just it's the wrong target market, like it's just the wrong type of audience that you're connecting with. It's just a research and development call and someone says no or I'm not interested or whatever, to take that next step and to ask that question, which is it? Like is it about the pitch, is it about the product or do you think it's just not the right fit for you? gives you invaluable feedback. And the moment that flipped in my head and I realized every opportunity I had to engage with someone, whether they were interested in what we had to do or not interested, was an opportunity to make what we do better. It's just the opportunity to explore, to understand and to be better. So as you can see, there's either something wrong with your pitch, how you're communicating, there's either something wrong with the product itself. There needs to be an extra fufa valve or a double flange widget or a duva malaki or something that would make it worthy of a yes or it's just the wrong target market. But what I didn't make enough of a point about was asking the question, why? 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 Why aren't you up for this? Why aren't you picking up what I'm putting down? And I think this is so important because I see a lot small business owners talking about whether they're starting a business or whether they're launching a new product, they talk about research. But here's the thing, if people like you, they're gonna tell you what you wanna hear if you're asking for feedback. Oh, Glenn, we love your product, it's awesome. Do you wanna buy it? Oh, no. Oh, Glenn, we love your company, it's awesome. Do you wanna come work for me? Oh, no. The truth comes out when you're actually asking someone to do something, whether it's open their wallet, or make a decision, or change their actions or behavior. So it's actually in the asking of them to do something legitimate, real, that you get the honest truth. And I think that's the best way to approach R&D. The question is, how do you ask why? The way I used to do it was straight up. The first thing I would do is I would remove my attachment to the outcome and I would remove their perception of my attachment to the outcome. So I'd say, let's say it was in sales, I'd say, okay, look, forget about you working with us. Let's just put that right off the table, totally get it. One thing I'd love to know though, business owner to business owner, where to be to be, it doesn't really matter how you do it. If you just say, I'm looking to improve my business, there's obviously something that's just not right. Cause it seems like, you know, you're the right person. It seems like all these things fit up. Like, what is it? What's missing? Is, is there a part of the product that's missing? Is there something I'm not communicating effectively? And what will often happen is they'll just straight up say, I'm looking for something that has X. 
which links straight to a potential product feature. Or they'll just say, I'm unsure about why, which links straight to your lack of communication or pitch to help them understand what they need to understand to make a decision. So a couple of examples. One of the things that I used to get a lot was people saying they didn't want to work with us because we didn't offer the one-to-one -one business coaching. We were running the key person of influence business accelerator. We're doing it all around the world, but a constant objection was, people wanting one-to-one -one coaching. So we built in one-to-one -one coaching and the additional uplift that created far and away offset the cost of building in that innovation. Another one was people would say they thought they were too small. They thought they were not doing enough revenue. And I clearly wasn't communicating that this wasn't about revenue. We would help new businesses start from scratch if the founder had half a decade to a decade of experience because it's the expertise that we're looking for to build influences, not experience in business. Often it's just people approaching business in entirely the wrong way. We'd also work with businesses doing five, 10 million in revenue. We'd work with their leadership team. Like it's so revenue agnostic. What we do has very little to do with the size of your business, but I wasn't communicating that clearly enough because I was using case studies of successful businesses and all that kind of stuff that we work with that the people at the small end of town that had this incredible experience would feel almost inadequate. So I had to change the way I pitched so those people with incredible experience would feel included, not excluded. Is this, is it making sense? I'd love to know in the comments below, what are the key things that you think you need to develop? Is it the product? Is it the pitch? Or is it the target market? The final thing you could tweak on this is your why. One of our core values at Dent is be brave. You know, be brave, have fun, make a dent. And being brave, the best phrase I have come across to articulate that is courage is not the absence of fear. It's just the recognition that there's something more important. And I think when it comes to getting over this fear of rejection, this fear of someone saying no, if you've got a why that's big enough, none of the other stuff matters. Hit me up in the comments below, subscribe, ring the bell if you like this stuff. It's the only way Google's gonna let you know the next time I release a video. My name's Glenn Carlson. Thanks for watching, be brave, have fun. Let's go make a dent in the universe.